By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my pink mid-range deck with a splash of green. And I'm sitting on the right and I'm playing against the Reprint King. So this is a player that enjoys reprints and he has a special um, fondness for reprints uh, uh, in a foreign language. So um, he likes the German cards, the Italian cards. And it's, it's, it's quite funny, actually. So it's not all going to be English, the Spanish cards. Um, so let's see if we see some uh, special language cards coming by. So this is already a, a special edition of City of Brass that he's playing here. I believe it comes out of one of those uh, champion decks. Because you can see that by the golden border here. And I'm actually starting with a couple of revised cards here myself. A um, plateau into uh, that I used to cast a Savannah line. So that's a good start for me. He's just playing a swamp here and I'm attacking. So he's going down to 18 and putting a white knight there on the table. So I'm playing very aggressively. I play a play set of lines and a play set of white knights in this deck. And he's taking two damage from both City of Brasses. And this is nice. He's playing an Earthquake. So that means I lose two creatures, and of course we both take two damage. So that Earthquake is quite brutal. Um, but, oh, look look at that. I'm just able to reproduce it. So exactly the same creatures here. So it looks like my opponent is already in trouble here. Needs some blockers. And at least there is a... Oh, wow, look at this. So there is a Lightning Bolt and a Fire Bolt taking care of both creatures. So he's actually being quite successful. Already removed four of my creatures. And here I go with my own City of Brass. And taking another life. So he's already down to 11 with those pain lands. But this is a problem here for me with that Hypnotic Spectre. So let's see if I can do something about this. Tapping a land, untapping a land. Tapping it again, untapping it again. Okay, I guess I'm kind of confused here what to do. A third plateau, so almost a place that they're on the battlefield. And there is a balance. And that's probably why I was kind of in doubt. Am I going to play another card? And... Um, so I don't have to discard or... And here's another Hypnotic Spectre from my opponent. So can I do something? I'm playing a Lightning Bolt. And that's actually quite nice when you're playing uh, with the colors red and white. You have this situation, at least in my case, where I play with four Lightning Bolts and four Swords to Plows here. So I have a lot of removal power in this deck. And there is a Queen. Oh! A Sorcerer's Queen from originally from the Arabian Nights, but there was a very quick sorts. And I did that because I had a Wheel of Fortune in my hand. So I just wanted to get rid of my cards and play a Wheel of Fortune. And I immediately play a Sylvan Library. So I've splashed in green. I'm still working on this build. Uh, I've now splashed in green for two Sylvan Libraries and a Regrowth. And there's some tapping going. And there's a Sengir Vampire. Pretty nice. But, of course, with all those cards drawn, there's a pretty big chance that I'll find a Swords to Plowseers or some other way to deal with this thing here. For now, I'm playing a Suchi and passing turn. So I'm on 17 still, and he's on 10. Let's see what's going to happen next. He's attacking. So I'm going down to 13. I have no answer at this point. And he's playing a second Sengir Vampire. So that's not too shabby for my opponent here. So the Reprint King is getting back into the game. And they just look like 4th edition Sengir Vampires there. I always like it when you have the Italian um, cards where they say uh, Volare. And that means flying. It's quite nice. And there's a Savannah Lines here. And I'm tapping some more. Mana and for what actually? I'm playing a Stone Rain. Okay, playing a Stone Rain. I'm choosing um, not to play it over... Um, his City of Brasses because I want him to take the damage already being down on 10 and the reason um, I'm taking the Mountains is He only has to that's a simple reason and I mean he plays with Fireball so just Taking some land can actually Kind of save me for one life and there's a Swords to Plowseers and that's always the downside of a Swords to Plowseers I kind of helping him back in the game as well and he's back on 14. He's got a book um, so, but of course I have the Sylvan still, I've got quite a lot of cards in hand, I believe, or is it just one card there? It's hard to see. I'm attacking with the lines at least, he's going down to 12. Playing a Disenchant over the book, and I think this is pretty brutal for my opponent here. He really needs that book. 
to compensate for that sylvan that I have on the board. And I'm on 12 now. My opponent's also on 12. So we're closer now. It's just Shatter on the Suchi. I mean, I've been playing Suchi like forever. And one of the things that I just have to deal with is the fact that Suchi just is so easy to remove. There's so much artifact hate out there. And of course, you have a lot of swords. So Suchi is never, um, never has a very long life on the battlefield. Now let's see what I can what I can find here. And there's a greed from my opponent. I believe it's in a different language. A greed, a really nice card from Legends that allows you to draw cards in exchange for life. And there's the attack by the lines. And my opponent is activating the greed, so that's why he's taking the damage. And oh, there's bolt, bolt, bolt. Is there another bolt? A regrowth over a bolt. My goodness, it's a triple bolt. I feel kind of bad. I feel kind of bad. Sorry, sorry, uh, Reprint King. I apologize because your deck is a lot of fun. So we're going to the second game after this, like triple brutal lightning bolt. And, uh, and let's see what's going to happen in game number two. Game number two with the Reprint King on the play here, starting off with an Ivory Tower turn one. And, oh, I've got a library of Alexandria, and this almost feels unfair here. I hope he's got some Stone Rain in his deck. Or a Strip Mine, because you have those in foreign languages as well. And um, there's this Savannah line here for myself on turn two. And it looks like he's not gaining any life yet. He's playing... Another City of Brass here, and I'm attacking. He's going down to 18. And playing a White Knight here, really putting on the pressure. A second Swamp. I think this could be a very short game if he doesn't get rid of that Library of Alexandria soon. There's a tap here for four, taking a damage, playing a, a Jadem Tome. So playing the book again. And it's interesting, when you look at the art of the book, uh, somebody recently told me, you can see a face in it. So the binder is the mouth. Um, and you can kind of see eyes there when you're looking closely at the book. Um, but okay, focusing back on the game again, I've played a Suchi. I've hit him here for four damage. He's playing a Dark Ritual. And he's again, he's doing it. He did it in game one. He's doing it in game number two. A really well-placed, timed uh, Earthquake, I should say. Does mean he gets some damage, though. But that Dark Ritual in combination there with the Earthquake, he gets rid of three creatures. But it doesn't take away the problems here with the Sylvan. I can just keep refilling my hand and just draw new cards here. So I've got the Suchi on the table. He's down on 9 already. And this is not looking good for my opponent here. The Reprint King. And interesting, when you look closely at uh, <laughs> showing his other book, he just used his book to draw another book. So that's not great. Uh, but if you look closely at that uh, Janum Tome that's there on the board, you can see it has flavor text. And I believe that the German version of, of Janum Tome has flavor text. So that's a tip. You can look it up and you can read the flavor text of Janum Tome. That's pretty cool, you know, those little details uh, where there's a difference between the English version and a foreign version. Um, I'm throwing out my balance, it seems, after attacking him. Oh yeah, I'm discarding. I was probably on eight cards. I've played another Suchi. He's on five. There's not much he can do. Or is there? He's playing a Dark Ritual. Tapping. Is there a Fireball maybe in one of the Suchis where he goes down to one? Oh, he's playing a Sengir. That's nice. Playing a Sengir Vampire. And passing turn. So at least he survives another turn. And he blocks and they both die. Takes four damage, goes to one, and again there's a lightning bolt. And it's funny, he's changing it to two, but uh, I'm sorry, Reprint King. Um, again, finishing it with a lightning bolt. So uh, that was the game, so I'm winning this one pretty pretty easy. Um, it seems like uh, the Reprint King needs to go back to the drawing board and, and try to make something else. I know he has a lot of other reprint decks, and maybe I'll go and make another fully reprint deck as well, and that would make it a little bit more of a, uh, of a fair game. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more games, there are a lot of closed games on the channel as well. 
um, click on the videos that are appearing right now on the screen or you can visit Timmy the Sorcerer here on YouTube. I have more than 60 videos for you with old school magic. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. Ik het was fikker te